Hello everyone, Harkins here, also known as the Red Cobra in World of Tanks. I've been installing Windows 7 on virtual drives, learning about clocking speeds of different CPU processing chips and multi-cores, but mostly, I've been tanking. That's right, World of Tanks is now available for free on the PS4. The footage you're seeing right now is beta footage, but some matches will be shown from the full game. Not much is really different between the beta several weekends ago and the full release game that's available now. I'm certain some bugs were fixed, but Wargaming is pretty good about polishing their games to perfection. Well, most of the time. <coughs> World of War plays. But obviously some things are different between the console and PC. I mean the new game engine, the new sounds. Manlier sounds for that matter. Along with night and day and differing weather maps that add a lot of immersion. As you can see though, there's only three nations available, but there are tier 10s in the full game. In the beta it only went up to tier 8, as you can see here. I'm scrolling up the German tree and, yep, only tier 8s. I guess that's to ease the matchmaker. You know, the further up you go in the tiers, the less people there are. And you know what happens when something like a new premium tank hits the market and, yeah, you have... 25 kv5s in one match of 30 people nobody likes it when that happens so they're starting out simple you got russia germany america your standard tech trees but how far have i actually gotten into the beta and the full game well i'm nearly at the kv1 in the russian heavy tree and i'm making a push for the panzer 4 in the german tree but let's talk about the game modes. There's Proving Grounds, which is a PvE mode. And I'm going to actually talk about that later in the video. But it's a great change to have PvE and different game modes that are offline. Because Armored Warfare has that, and everyone loves Armored Warfare for that. But back to progression. I'm actually taking the same two routes that I took on the PC. Going up the KV line, soon to hit the ISs, and also going up the German line of the Panzer IVs, and soon to the Tiger. Now the reason why I'm going up the same lines that I've done on the PC is to see how things have changed. See if progression has changed, and to tell the truth it has. As you can see here, Crews are kind of like commanders now, like in Armor Warfare. You have a commander that you can give perks to. And you can take that commander from the same type of tank and put him in the next tank. And as you can see here, for researching, you still have the simplified console packages. Now, I don't really like that. As you can see, it's like, increase your view range, increase your damage output, increase your speed. It's things like that. And you can't really change the individual modules, but I think they're just simplifying this to make things a little bit easier on a newcomer. So I could appreciate that. Now, Proving Grounds is the new PvE mode. Now, I know on the PC, the at very low tiers, or maybe it's only for tier 1 in PC, I don't remember. But it's almost like a tutorial battle. And the AI sucked. Well, that's fine for a tutorial battle. But basically, you could do it at any tier for Proving Grounds. That's awesome. So as you can see here, I'm in the tier 3 uh, American Locust. Which actually is a pretty good premium it's all chrome it's all shiny it looks cool it's got a really fast rate of fire on this little cannon it's not that accurate but with that fire rate it could do a lot of damage you know this tank also has pretty good armor too subcaliber guns aren't cutting that frontal plate if you angle it and as, as you can see here I'm just shredding them I, obviously they're AIs, they're just sitting there, aren't doing much. There's a Hotchkiss over there that's kind of 
absorbing the shells. But just watch what I do to this cruiser. First shot, it misses. Second shot, barely hits him. Third, fourth, and he's dead. You can shred tanks with this one. And look how fast it goes, too. It can go pretty fast. It's one of the fastest tanks you'll get. And there is the Matilda's booty. Right there. Very thick. Fett will appreciate that inside joke. But anyways, I still get on to shredding these guys with this thing. There's that hotch kiss again. Finally I aim it where I can actually hurt him and I kill him. And there's a little MS-1 up there. I'll put him out of his misery. But just listen to the gun sounds. Just listen to that. It sounds like you're firing a tank gun. I mean, I get into the cap here. And I'm going to come under fire. Just listen to the sounds. It sounds like you're in a tank battle. I do the auto-aim thing here, where I'm just kind of angling my armor and auto-aiming. My auto-aim's basically the same. And they're dead. Of course you don't get the same results as you'll see in a PvP match. In fact, I get very little. Even with the premium account. But it's still fun, and it's a nice break from PvP. So, how is PvP? Well, here we are in Himmelsdorf. I love this map. I'm pretty sure all World of Tanks players love Himmelsdorf. And just look at the graphics. I just love the new graphics engine they're using for the consoles. It adds a little bit more depth. It, you know, I find myself at times playing on the PC and it may just be because I had to play it at a lower graphics, but it feels like I'm playing in a toy tank on World of Tanks. The reason why people go to War Thunder for tanking is because tanks are awesome, and they feel like that in ground forces in War Thunder. Though you can get one shot, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how physics work, and it's realistic, but you feel like a beast in your Tiger H. In World of Tanks, it's you don't feel like a beast when you're in a tiger. It's all about hit points. But listen to this battle. I get up here with a friendly locust. And we're just absolutely pounding this 1C. He never get into a corner when you're a Panzer 1C. There's a light. Oh, there's a Panzer IV on the side. He can be a threat. I miss. Hits me right in the side. That does a lot of damage. But he's down. So now the Slocus and I, we can get up here and we can take this hill. Angle. Make sure that the light doesn't hit me too hard. Panzer II. I auto-aim at first, get a good hit into him, and then I aim in. Don't want to auto aim on a moving target. I mean, even at tier three, you just feel like you're an awesome tank. It sounds great. It feels like they have weight to them, and that's always good in a tank game. You know, medium and light tanks on the PC. You fire the gun, it just sound like poof. You know, they just go poof. In this game, it sounds like there's, it's hefty, there's some blast back, it just feels like you're firing a cannon, and not some kind of, like, air gun. Of course, there's mods for that, you know, there's, uh, Gnome Father's mod pack, which I haven't gotten working, but... You can mod it, but it's not in the actual vanilla game. Now here's another match on Himmelsdorf. I'm in the T-46, and there's no one up here. So I come down, and I take on their artillery. 
think I'm using the 76 millimeter gun. I mean, look at that damage. I bounce that, but it's a priest. He has a lot of armor in the front. You can hear me spamming the fire button, like shoot it, shoot it. But a 76 millimeters got a long aim time, so I get quite nervous when I don't kill him. That was close, but I still kill him. But most of the players are still noobs, but that's what you can expect at tier one to three, especially with new players in the game. So if you're a veteran at World of Tanks, you could pretty much ace tanker most of these tanks on the first try. But you have to be forgiving. These guys are new, so just be patient with them. Now so far in this match, I'm taking the base, but they're taking the base. But I have more points. So I gotta be careful not to get shot. Of course he pulls out when I move, so now I have to aim again. I kill him, but someone just nailed me in the butt. It's another T-46, but here's the problem. He's got a faster firing gun, and it's more accurate. So he fills me for full of four shots before I can even aim all the way to shoot him. Then I realize, screw it. I've just lost all my points and I try to go take back the cap. Nope. We lost in the end. Nothing much to see there, but still a good match. People are still getting used to these tanks, so you gotta be patient. Now here's another Himmelsdorf battle, except it's at night. And it just adds a completely another dimension of immersion in World of Tanks when you have a battle like this. Just listen to the raindrops. It gives you that sense of like that's some thick steel right there. It's just a little bit more immersion. In the background you can see flares popping up. There's a battle happening in this town of Himmelsdorf. Now the one thing I don't like is that comms are hot. If you have a headset on and you're using it, it's connected, your voice is in the game, no matter what. It isn't just platoons. So I don't like that. It's very Call of Duty-like, and I think that's stupid. But, you know, it's consoles. Maybe they thought it was good for consoles. But look at this locust. There's another locust next to me helping me, and this guy is just... he. He can't even fight back. And then, hello. It's a shooting range. Look at the glowing holes. Look at those glowing penetrating holes in the back of that guy. It just looks good. It feels good. Yes, I am slaughtering them. This is a good sniping spot. Look at the flares popping up in the sky. It make it feels like you're actually in a battle. On the PC, you know, it's just so much like a corridor shooter, and the people use that term because of different pathways and such on maps. But when you add in things like weather effects, different sounds, a different perspective, even a little bit different graphics engine, just to change the depth and the distance perception of it all. It could really change your experience of the game. I'm definitely going to be playing this for a while. So I do a little bit of sniping up there on the hill. I see we're losing our cap. There's a T-46 left and obviously he's in our cap because he's the one last guy left. And there he is. Obviously he's still there, so I keep shooting. Someone else gets the kill, but we've won. That was a really good match. Of course I aced the Locust, I think, on the second match. But probably the first weekend of the beta. This was a first class mastery though, which is pretty good still. It's a good result. But at the end of video, I'm going to leave it with this match. And I think this match was the most enjoyable. Now I actually tried to cancel out of the match queue. 
because I didn't have a repair kit or a medical kit. And you'll see that me really regretting that at the end of this battle, but this is province, it's at night, and people still don't understand the spotting system. If you lean over the cliff here and you fire at someone, you're spotted, everyone can see you across the map. And as you can see, I'm blind firing these guys. I see their tracers coming out of cover, and I shoot where I think they are, and I'm hitting them. You saw the ribbons come up as I was shooting them. There's a T-46 over there. Sniping from around that corner. And I'm just watching for that tracer fire. Trying to hit them. T-46 has popped back out. And he regretted it. But unfortunately, I don't finish him off. My shot went wide. This gun can be unpredictable put a few more blind shots and look at this poor martyr over here he gets spotted and that's just basically the end of him people don't understand if you're if you fire and you're spotted everyone's going to see you over there's a panzer he ninjas out of the way a locust, unfortunately, is racing across the bottom of the map here. And this is when our martyr is spotted. Yep. Now our martyr next to me is dead. That locust spotted him when he fired, and he got terminated. Watch this shot. A blind shot kill. Uh oh. So I wasn't worried about that guy, but I'm worried about the everyone else that can see me and is starting to shoot at me. My radio man ate it, and I don't have the medical kit to get him back. I'm really going to regret not having a repair kit, and that's why you spend that 3k uh, credits? Silver? They call it silver, right? Yeah. You're going to really regret not getting one of those repair kits because it is the difference between winning a match and losing a match so as you can see it's coming down to the wire here it's really close unfortunately our Panzer 38 has to go commit suicide by poking over the ridge there watch yep all I can do at this point is watch the tracer fire. And I do get good hits into something over there. I think it may be the tank destroyer. So our Panzer 38 died, but I think whoever was down there caught fire and died with him. So it's just me, another Panzer 38, and the artillery against two Panzer 38s, a Martyr Tank Destroyer, and a an Priest Artillery Gun. That Priest is a real big problem because he one-shots. I have had match after match playing on here getting one-shotted by a Priest. I kinda like the commands, like, good game, I kinda like that, how you can just pull that up, not even have to use a mic just good old old fashioned world of tank style. So, my ally here spotted that one guy. Artillery was firing in on us, and now they're in our cap circle. We spot him, and he just disintegrates. We'd both disintegrate this guy. But remember, the artillery's watching, so I cre we both crest up towards this hill, trying not to get too out of cover. But, even though I'm a good player, I make mistakes. Now I'm out in the open, and now I've been spotted. What do you think's going to happen here? Firing at this guy. I miss the first shot. I hit with the second. There goes my track. My gun is damaged. My turret is damaged. I'm dead. 
because I don't have a repair device. I can't get my track back up in time, and when it's back up, the priest is reloaded and he kills me. That's why you spend 3,000 silver on a repair device. Life and death, people. Our, our artillery actually gets a kill before we lose the match. He's like, did you shoot me? Yeah, I bet you shot me. Uh. And then he's dead. But it was still a really good match. We lost it, but that was fun. And I find myself really liking these matches, even if we lose on the console. This was even the match that I got the one trophy, one man army. Get twice the XP of the next guy on your team. So, World of Tanks on the PS4. How do I like it? Well, I love it. I'm going to be playing it for a real long time alongside the PC. Of course, it isn't just for the PS4. It has just come out for it, but it's on the Xbox One and 360. So if you have those consoles, please, I recommend you try it out. Because if you're not into PC gaming, I can understand. Consoles are great. And World of Tanks is on there for free. So please, give it a try. I think you'll love it. I mean, the new graphics engine makes it look good, the sound design is spot on, the guns sound like cannons, not like air guns in the PC, even though you can mod it on the PC. And there's still a lot of tanks to choose from. Of course, players are still going to be noobs, but, you know, they're new to the game. Be patient with them. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I may have clips coming out from this game on the PS4. And I hope you guys give it a try. This has been the Red Cobra, and I'll see you in the next one.